Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a spooky Charmed Rewind. Ooh. The scariest episode they ever did. Every episode with Phoebe in it is truly frightening. <laughs> of phoebe being an idiot yeah uh i guess to be fair everyone's kind of annoying in this episode <laughs> phoebe's the tops as <laughs> usual i think well, i know who your margoyle is gonna be but <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh we covered season five episode 20 sense and sense ability uh story by brian kraus mm -hmm. uh written by uh, him and then butchered by someone else apparently yeah. brad kern <laughs> apparently according to the wiki yeah, so this was kind of a weird story, huh? Yeah, apparently Brad Kress was bored on Brian set. Kress, I think Brian, said Brad. <laughs> I'll just combine them, Brad yeah. Kern and Brian Kress. Brian Kress was bored on set, staring at this monkey totem prop, I guess, they had, and he's like, oh, I'll write a story about this while I'm sitting around waiting to do anything, probably. Imagine him, like, after the millionth scene of being, like, flung into a wall, like, he's, like, looking around, like, huh, ah, monkey, huh? <laughs> And then basically you see on his face every time he shows up, he's like, that's not what I wrote. That's not what I wrote. <laughs> I wonder what he did write. I wonder if it was better or worse or maybe a lateral move to this. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, this is going toward the end of season five. So we have um, some Wyatt storylines going on. Uh, we also have the conclusion of the two-part episode arc of The Crone. No. Exciting stuff. Pretty cool. The end of Sarah Palmer's mother. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Palmer is her mother. Laura Palmer. Laura Palmer's mother. <laughs> An Arnold Palmer in her hand. <laughs> She's dead, wrapped in plastic. <laughs> they didn't have anything left to wrap in plastic by the end of this no. episode. <laughs> they said there were some ashes or something on the floor. There was a smudge mark left of her. <laughs> They'll vacuum it Wrap up and it then put in it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> she had less left of her than the Sandman. At least he had like a pile of glitter, you know? <laughs> anyway, anything else before we jump in? I was going to say, um, I was reading you the uh, short synopsis for this episode, and then I jokingly added... And meanwhile, Phoebe <laughs> worries about the paper. Is very accurate. That is her yeah. subplot throughout the episode. Basically, you, you can guess any episode after she has the job at the paper, assume she is going to do some <laughs> stupid paper bullshit, and that's that's exactly what yeah. was happening. I said that, and you're like, oh no, I'm, like, I'm just joking, but <laughs> it's really it's going on through the whole episode. I hate how obnoxious they are with this newspaper stuff. I mean, the fact that she, she focuses on it all the time, but also they always have to have someone kissing her fucking ass mm -hmm. all the time, and that goes on in this episode, too. They act like she has problems where people are like, oh, I love you, Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the advice columnist needs to be in on any of these meetings anyway. Well, if you're fucking the boss, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Naked woman! Anyway, um, anything else before we go in? No. Alright. The opening scene is Paige singing a lullaby to baby Wyatt. Uh, he's used to hearing terrible harpy music from his mother, so he doesn't know... <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with this. <laughs> what, what kind of music do you think... Piper would sing or play for Wyatt. He, like screeches her nails on a chalkboard and, <laughs> and yells. It's the music of the night. <laughs> <laughs> it's music in hell. Go to sleep. <laughs> See, I just wrote down Skrillex, but I think yours is better. <laughs> Uh, anyway, from the shadows <laughs> lurks Norman Reedus, <laughs> uh, and they do not introduce him immediately. So we were trying to figure out, like, if if we were supposed to know who the fuck this is, yeah. or like, is this a demon sneaking up on her? Or... Just a wonderful two episode arc. Yeah, apparently this is a guy who's dating her, but this is his first episode. So this was people's introduction to him is just yeah, kind of it's... coming around the corner, and it's just like a guy in black which is every demon that they have so mm -hmm. you'd be forgiven for thinking maybe this is a demon waiting to attack yeah and he goes silent hills coming never <laughs> <laughs> anyway um <laughs> the character's name is nate parks not that you'll remember or care but that's his name <laughs> 
Uh, Paige is dating him, apparently. This is their, uh, I don't know, I don't, fifth or sixth date or something. They make some joke about it being some date. Oh, watch my sister's baby date. Yeah, <laughs> that seems like a good date, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Paige is embarrassed about singing to the baby in front of him. Uh, but he says that she's better than most singers that he books at the club. So he's like another club owner. Because it's not P3 that they go to. It seems to be his club, which is some sort of, like, lounge type thing. Right. Yeah, that's confusing. You think, like, he's, like, a rival of Piper's? <laughs> <laughs> he's, tr- he's actually, like, undercover to get the scoop? <laughs> this seems to be an episode where they forget they have P3. Yeah, honestly, you wouldn't think that they own a club together at this point. No, there's large parts of the series where they forget P3 exists. They could have easily written around this to... A, use their own set, but maybe they had redressed it to be this new set, but like, um, they could have just used their own set and had him be like, oh, I talked to the band to get you to sing. That's really the only reason they have him own a club, mm-hmm. is to arrange with the band to get Paige to sing for a second. Yeah. Anyway, Paige says that she's embarrassed about singing because in the eighth grade, uh, her eighth grade graduation, she was supposed to sing, uh, and then she got stage fright and lost her voice. So they're setting it up for later that she will lose her voice. Because uh, 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 uh. of a monkey. <laughs> Someone's monkeying <laughs> around with him. Sounds kind of stupid. <laughs> I, I thought it was weird, the 8th grade graduation thing. I mean, I, I don't remember if I had an 8th grade graduation, but it just doesn't seem like that big a deal. Like, she's like, oh, I missed my graduation because of this. It's kind of traumatizing for me, but it's like, I don't know. I just feel like you're just going into another grade. Mm-hmm. It do, It's not the same as, like, high school graduation. Like, you're going to college, you're going out into the world, etc. Like, middle school to high school is pretty nothing. I wouldn't really mm-hmm. care. <laughs> Eighth grade was the middle of junior high for me, so it was absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Does this mean anything for people outside of the States? It's like, eighth grade graduation, what? <laughs> what is this? Anyway, uh, they make out. That story was very uh, sexy, I guess, so they make out. Uh, Nate goes into the kitchen to get them some more wine, when a shirtless demon man shimmers on in and grab Paige- grabs Paige's head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she orbs away immediately, so this was a good plan of grab her head. Bye. Bye. Uh, she calls for Leo and Piper. It's kind of weird hearing someone say, and Piper, and not just Leo, but mm. for some reason she calls them both. It's bold of her to assume that Piper would help, <laughs> but I guess she does. <laughs> Piper didn't even complain about being called. It seemed like they were on a date night. They must have been, because Paige was watching the baby. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they explained what they were doing. They were in kind of nice outfits, so it might have been a date night or something. Yeah, I guess so. They're like, can you, on your date night, watch a baby while we're yeah. on our date night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Piper. I was supposed to keep the baby out of my way for the date night. <laughs> yeah, she didn't complain about it at all. That's very surprising. Yeah. But yeah, like, they're, they have, like, wine. They're making out. They clearly seem to have plans to go further, but how you're not going to do that with, like, a baby in the house. Mm-hmm. Not, like, that kind of sexy date, I wouldn't think. Like, well, hey, why go force field yourself in the corner? I guess that's true. <laughs> he's got a force field, so he's fine. <laughs> uh, so, Leo and Piper Orbin. Piper immediately blows up the demon man uh, pretty quick. Yeah, another wonderful fight semen turn. With lazy Pipers, put my hands up and it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, these are, by the way, this is going to be a plot through the episode, Kazi demons, which uh, I guess, I don't know, asexually produced from the king, like he just spurts off a bunch of, we never see any of this, yeah, we see man. two guys, possibly the same guy, because one's resurrected, that, the one that they killed, yeah. uh, and then the king. So kind of, for the premise they set up, it really seems like they didn't even need to do that. No, like, this guy could have been any lower level demon, and then the other guy could have been some higher one that was his lackey because they don't explain these cosy demons or really like how it's supposed to work and they act like this is super common they act <laughs> they keep talking they're, they're about oh yeah cosy demons yeah we deal with them all the time like, yeah apparently they're having a rash of cosy attacks lately 
kamikaze attacks, yeah, kamikaze. if you will. Because <laughs> I guess they keep getting killed. They keep uh-huh. going there and then getting killed. It's like, surely there are other people you can attack than yeah. them. It's so weird to act like these are a regular thing when this is the only episode they ever appear in. I just don't get why. They set up this thing where they're king. You have to kill the king and then it will destroy all of them. But you can uh-huh. kill the minions. Um, but they don't show a bunch of minions. They never see more than one at a time. Apparently they all look like the same guy. But he could be sending yeah, out maybe. a bunch of them. And then it's like, okay, we need to get rid of them by getting the king. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they seem to set up this lore and then become disinterested in it. Yeah, there's real no point to it. No, there's barely even any point to the Kazi king at all. No, he's kind of a wiener. Yeah, the the um, demon guy could just be a minion of the crone, and it would work about the same. It's yeah. like they just had him there for her to talk to. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Because it seems like it's weird the crone bothers with this middleman. To yeah, be honest, he's pointless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this uh, Kazi demon, when he's vanquished, uh, he leaves a flaming scorch mark on the rug and uh, Paige stamps it out with her stylish boots. <laughs> she tries to shoo Piper and Leo out of the house before Nate comes back in, uh, but he comes in before they can leave. And he's he goes, like, oh, I didn't even... <gasps> yeah, I don't know why. That's the... Oh, get out of here. It'll be weird. Uh, but he goes, oh, well, I didn't hear you come in. But he also didn't hear Paige yelling for them or an explosion, so I feel like you wouldn't have heard them anyway, even if they were coming in. a lot. <laughs> I feel like you would have heard some of that, at least. He blasts the music so much at his club, he's pretty much death. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, foreshadowing for later. Like, yeah. Paige lost her voice and then he lost his hearing, much mm-hmm. like Phoebe will later. <laughs> Cut to, I'm not sure where, the underworld... A lair somewhere where this crone lives. Yeah, this crone. Who is named the crone? Just the crone. We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Great charmed. And she's not just like some generic... She's supposed to be like a thing, right? Like she wrote these like ancient laws yeah, she about writes these prophecies demon laws. involving them and shit. Yeah, that Kazi king comes in and says like, oh, there's a law that says you can't kill that stupid baby. And she's like, yeah. I know, I wrote it. Yeah. <gasps> you wrote that? The crone? (laughs) She's supposed to be some upper level type demon, but she was in two episodes and killed very easily in this one. It's It's pretty pathetic. It's so stupid. I mean, knowing Charmed, if they did name her, probably would have been like Sargoyle or something. (laughs) (laughs) The ones where, I mean, Margoyle, at least, it's a stupid name, but it's a name. Mm -hmm. It's not like he was just called the Gargoyle or something, Uh you know? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe if he I was don't... the Margoyle, you'd be like, what is what is a Margoyle? Like, oh, he's the Margoyle. <laughs> it's so lazy with the way it doesn't name a bunch of these characters. Yeah, you, I mean, like, sometimes it's like you don't have, put your best foot forward or maybe you just didn't bother naming them because they weren't important enough. But, like, this was clearly supposed to be, like, a big threat. Mm-hmm. It was like the seer just being the seer. Yeah. Like, they and don't it's, give them names. It's weird. Like a real actor they got in to play this part. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, Grace Zabriskie, who was uh, the mom on Twin Peaks. Yeah. She's been in 166 things or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's really putting in, like, a better performance than really the show deserves, <laughs> yeah. considering she's named The Crone and has, like, a gray wig and dressed like an old-timey witch or something, <laughs> and she's still, like, trying, even though, like, hey, 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 yeah. the charmed one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she has brought back that demon that they just uh, vanquished, the Kazi demon. He's pissed about it. And uh, she's like, all right, well, you need to thank me for bringing you back to life. So uh, maybe you could set up a meeting with your king. I would like that. Uh, And if you get me a meeting, I'll serve the old king, the charmed ones, on a platter. He says, no one meets the king! (laughs) They're acting like this is a big old deal. The king is like, you know, top dog there. No one can get in to see this king guy. And then if she teams up with him, maybe they'll be like a super team. But none of this really comes to to play. It kind of seems like she could have done this whole thing by herself. Yeah, the king comes in. He's kind of wearing sad king clothes. He's like, (laughs) can't even afford shirts for my minions. (laughs) I don't know what she gets from him. I don't know what he gets from her. No. Not a solid plan. I don't know why she... wandered off a renaissance fair. He does. (laughs) 
why does she bother resurrecting this guy I to arrange know. this meeting? Like, <laughs> surely there can why be other ways to... Why any of the Kazi demon stuff, really? <laughs> she could have just met up with one that wasn't dead and said, like, hey, I got a plan to get the Charmed Ones. Yeah, because they set this the up same. like it, he can spawn them or whatever. Yeah. I think your analogy where you said, like, they're, like, drone bee drones, and he's, like, the bee queen. <laughs> it, queen. He's the king or queen of the bees. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess that's what they're sort of setting up, just we never really see it working that no, way. No, he never spawns any other guys. He only sends in one at a time. Why don't you send in a million of them? If you have a bunch of them, they can't take them all out. Mm -hmm. They've handicapped them in some way, so why can't yeah. you send more than one guy in? Mm-hmm. This Kazi demon asks her about, like, he says, like, oh, you're after the Charmed Ones, and she's like, no, nah, I don't really care about them personally. I'm after the baby. I want to get my hands on this baby. <laughs> Wait a minute. He kind of looks like a baby. Uh, cue the Phoebe hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're back at the manor. Uh, Phoebe is on the phone with Jason, um, her boss at the paper, who she loved to cheat on when he took trips. <laughs> <laughs> so dating her boss... Sleeping around, uh, really ethical. <laughs> She's like, all right, I'm going to meet up with these consultants. Uh, they're being, they're trying to get into national syndication for the paper. I don't know if it's just her or the whole paper. If it's the whole paper, she's kind of fucking everyone over with her decisions. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's just her column or what. I don't. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm going to meet with the consultants. <laughs> Uh, Piper is there being annoying also while she takes pictures of Wyatt. Uh, she's complaining because she's boring him. He won't smile for her. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't you smile at me? <laughs> <laughs> Do I not give you enough daily beatings? Why does he always look afraid of me? I don't get it. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe is uh, warbling on on the phone forever uh, while this is going on. And she's like, mm -hmm. I don't care if the South thinks my column is too edgy. <laughs> the <laughs> South thinks her column is too edgy? What the fuck is she writing? The, is she talking, is she saying like, interracial marriage is okay? <laughs> oh, the South hates that! <laughs> Out the edge, Piper, or Phoebe. <laughs> Out the edge. <laughs> just want to clarify, I don't think everyone from the South is like that. <laughs> Sorry, Southern <viewer> listeners. <laughs> I, maybe this podcast is too edgy for This them. is edgy. Out of the edge. Podcast. Out of the edge. Anyway, I don't understand that. What is edgy about her column? Like, she literally yeah. just says, like, follow, follow your, your heart. heart. Yeah. yeah. Follow your heart. Anyway, um, she's like, hey, Jason, when are you going to come home? Uh, so she can figure out how much time she has left to cheat on him. <laughs> <laughs> No sex. Lots and lots of sex. <laughs> so uh, Piper is still pissed that Wyatt won't smile for her uh, when Leo wanders in, and it's giggle time. This kid loves Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, ah! <laughs> Better put your force field up, baby! And then she tries to blow him up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she uh, she presumably daydreams about blowing him up because <laughs> she is jealous of her husband <laughs> having quality time with the baby. <laughs> uh, Leo starts to change Wyatt's clothes. They're getting ready to go to a fair. And Wyatt starts to fuss a little bit. And then Piper goes, are you hurting him? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's gently unbuttoning a onesie. Are you hurting him? <laughs> no more than you hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't find his power. That's a good idea. <laughs> Phoebe recognizes this as uh, a hungry cry, uh, and Piper declares she's a terrible mother. <laughs> not recognizing this. Uh, true, terrible mother. <laughs> and then she blows up Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the only mother around. You'll have to deal with me, Wyatt. Keep Paige around for babysitting purposes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on thin ice, Paige. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, they hear an explosion in the attic, and they rush in to find Paige with a turkey baster. <laughs> <laughs> what if they just no context went to the next scene? <laughs> I don't want to know what you're doing in here. <laughs> She's like, I'm getting ready for date night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She is saying, I'm finally going to have a love life while holding a turkey yeah, baster. So. Like, what? <laughs> they have some hilarious. Know she's inseminating them. <laughs> <laughs> they do have some hilarious dialogue about, I'm going to have a love life. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> 
Uh, she's making a stun potion, so she can go on a date uh, without these Kazi demons making- She's like, oh, I'm gonna stun them, and, and then they won't be a problem. I don't know how they wouldn't be a problem, because they'd still have to show up for her to have to stun them. Yeah. Doesn't really uh, get rid of the problem here. Oh, like, why don't we just kill them? She's like, no, if we stun them- we can catch them and torture them. Yeah, that's literally the plan. They're like, we will capture them and torture them. And then they will tell us where the king is. The crone was more ethical than <laughs> them in getting information yeah. from the Kazis than, than their idea here. Yeah. It, true enough. That's exactly what they do later. They catch yeah. one and start torturing and torture them. them. <laughs> They're supposed to be the good guys. No qualms about this. They're even like giggling and laughing. Like Phoebe and Piper <laughs> debate whether the king will feel the minion's pain and show up or if the minion will just break down from the torture and tell them everything. They're, <laughs> they're placing bets on this. At this point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe says this it's a great plan an oldie but a goodie is what she says <laughs> an oldie but a goodie they've tortured so many demons that this is an oldie but a goodie mm. a classic for the charmed ones <laughs> and torturing we haven't done that in a long time <laughs> odd news but I could use a good torture <laughs> Long it always brings out a was glow work. in me like good yeah. torture. And you're like, how do you get such a glow at work? And I'm like, torture. <laughs> <laughs> and then they kiss my feet. <laughs> and then you go, follow your heart and they're like, oh, you're so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I go like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> Bring me chocolates. <laughs> Syndicate my ass. <laughs> uh, anyway, um... <laughs> Leo shows up with Wyatt to say that they're ready to head to the fair. Apparently, he wasn't curious about what that explosion was. He never got an answer. He just goes up and he's like, fair time. Like, he doesn't know. It could be a demon attack. It could be anything. And he's like, hey, fair time. Let me bring the kid up here. Yeah, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Phoebe says that she has to work. She has that meeting for national syndication. Uh, and Piper bitches her out that she's like, oh, you gotta go? It's fair day. <laughs> I hate to side with Phoebe here, but fuck off. <laughs> Does no- Piper, surely you used to work. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> supposedly you own a club and you should probably have to do something with that once yeah, in a while. She even bitches she's working on the weekend. And it's like, you own a club. Surely that's your busiest days mm -hmm. is the weekend. <laughs> Uh, and Piper is like, well, we're a family. This is why it's first fair. He doesn't have that many firsts left. And Paige points out that's bullshit. <laughs> like, a ton of firsts left. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Phoebe's like, okay, fine, fine. I'll go. But only if I get to be obnoxious on a cell phone. <laughs> Do we really need this? <laughs> no. Uh, meanwhile, the crone is meeting up with the Kazi king. Uh, he, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> he screams to announce his arrival. Oh, yeah. ah! The ye yell teleport. <laughs> ah! He even pulls a, do you know who I am to her? <laughs> and she is not impressed. She's like, shut up. <laughs> That's when she's like, you know, drops it. She writes the rules and his jaw drops. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why does she need him? Why? No reason given. Yeah, she's like, okay, if we partner up, you'll get all the credit for killing the Charmed Ones. I don't care if I get credit. You you can say yeah. that you did it, whatever. I just need a little hit of the future off this baby. Yeah, um, yeah. he points out that there's this uh, law against killing this specific baby. A demon law? I don't know. A law, I guess, because she wrote it. Whatever laws she writes. <laughs> yeah, she says, I wrote that law. I don't want to kill him. I just want to put my hands on him and get a vision. Because I had a vision of him being super powerful in the future, but I want to know more. So I need to Dude, hold this kid for a second. I need the power of the babe. I'm going to drop them in a mu creepy Muppet labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> the voodoo she do. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, this could have been so much easier. She could have just teleported in. Did whatever voice thing or whatever. Like, you don't need to steal their voices to do this. You just, like talk in no. their voice there's some other spells to do this i'm sure they've had this on the show before and just hold the kid for a second and leave and no one would be any the wiser mm. even better if she got them to like do a contract and like page sang and she stole her voice yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'll be the most powerful singer at the club and <laughs> overcome your eighth grade tra trauma but <laughs> then i will get your voice by the end <laughs> 
Uh, and then, like, Piper's like, no, I'm evil, Ursula. <laughs> it's my little evil children. Oh, can count on your evil showing up, you win. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good to be evil. Basically, the crone just exists in this episode to foreshadow for the audience uh, what a disappointment the Wyatt storyline's going to turn out to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, what I've seen! The things set sh sights to show you! you know? <laughs> and then people are supposed to be intrigued by that, and then, like, once they see he's just evil Nickelback, it's like, <laughs> right, that was it. <laughs> Look at this photograph! <laughs> Look at this fair mime. <laughs> Look at this stupid Chris. This plot really makes no sense. <laughs> Look at Norman Reedus. <laughs> Into episodes of Charmed. <laughs> He'll be gone just like the crown. <laughs> It's just going into back to the sewers, into <laughs> turtles. <laughs> they say that a Wyatt will save us. <laughs> but I'm going back to the sewers. <laughs> anyway, now that everyone's turned the podcast off, you can say what you really feel about them. Make more digs at the South. They'll love it. <laughs> Uh, so she's like, well, here's how I'm going to take out the Charmed Ones. Listen to this plan. <laughs> I have a stupid monkey prop that Brian Krause found on set when he was bored, um, and inspired this episode. I'm going to use this. <laughs> <laughs> Kazi King goes, ow, the edge. <laughs> oh, this is so edgy. And then Brian Krause is like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, that's not what I wrote. Wait. <laughs> I didn't even have monkeys in it. I just looked at the prop and I went like, I have a different idea. <laughs> Brad Kern, damn it! <laughs> it's sad that this is actually the second episode about a monkey stealing, like, their powers in some way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty sad. <laughs> well, this is just a monkey stealing their basic senses. I yeah, guess. I guess the monkeys in the other one stole their, their power powers. Yeah. So really, this is kind of like a downgrade. <laughs> yeah. Everything <laughs> from season four onward is a downgrade. <laughs> So, uh, at the fair, Wyatt is meeting a pony! <laughs> Leo suggests that they go meet a clown, and Piper vetoes that idea. He's like, clowns are scary! <laughs> I mean, I guess Piper's right for once. <laughs> it's a Halloween episode now. <laughs> um, Piper is filming all this, and Leo's like, you're missing out on all the fun by filming everything. Apparently he wants no cherished memories of his children. <laughs> Uh, she points out that she's not as big of a loser as Phoebe, who's being obnoxious on a cell phone and being mocked by a mime. Yeah, this is how far she's fallen. A mime is making fun of her. This is hilarious. <laughs> so uh, the mime is in the wrong, though. <laughs> The mime, the mime shouldn't be mocking people on their cell phones. She's got a business call. Technically, she's, I mean... You know, this is a big deal. It's not just like, oh, work, work, work all the time. National syndication's a big thing. This mm -hmm. mime doesn't know what she's on the phone about. She could be have a sick parent somewhere, and she's on the call. This she is doesn't, what you he expect. Doesn't know. This is an edgy mime comedy. <laughs> like, you go there, you, you know this mime's going to make fun of you when you go to this mime show. He's actually making fun of her because he's seen her obnoxious billboards all over town. Yeah. Like, she has the answer, and he's like, oh, I'm I mean, baby. Yes, yeah. baby. I guess she's supposed to be walking around the whole fair like, oh, yeah. Ask Phoebe. I'm gonna get to the meeting. <laughs> this is a big syndication deal. Yeah, I guess they're they're calling her because they want her to get there and she's late. Mm -hmm. But if she's late by that point, get off the phone and just go. Yeah, it's not like she has any time to do anything. Uh, it's just so she can be annoying. I'm like, um, what's this mime like when he has sex in <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. I'm, I'm a man. <laughs> Anyone gets that reference, it's a deep dig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a mime. I'm a mime. <laughs> uh, well, apparently people fucking love this mime. He's mocking her, and then a crowd gathers and laughs at the spectacle. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at Phoebe, like, hee! Including, like, Leo and Piper, like, hee! <laughs> uh, Paige wanders on over with uh, cotton candy. And she says Phoebe sucks, but so do mimes. Um, <laughs> and then she gives him her cotton candy and they leave? Yeah. Like, why does she give her cotton candy to the mime? She didn't eat it's any like, of it. You suck, mime. Here, have cotton candy. Yeah. Rewards him for his bad behavior? 
Uh, smash cut to a monkey. <laughs> Uh, the monkey is sitting on top of a stall at the fair. Somehow no one there notices that a fucking, like, yeah. what is it, a capuchin monkey? Is that what they're called? I don't know. Stupid it's, monkeys. I mean, you wouldn't called. expect any monkeys. No, but, I mean, no. like. No, especially not that monkey. <laughs> that's a weird monkey. I, don't I know, thought a monkey might be here, but not that one. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I wouldn't expect a monkey, but it's kind of an exotic monkey, you know? Like, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of monkey would be okay. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> Monkeys allowed at this fair. None. <laughs> uh, Phoebe sh- uh, wanders over to them and she's like, all right, I got five minutes to get on a ride with Wyatt real quick. <laughs> and Paige calls her pathetic. <laughs> this may be the best part of the episode. <laughs> uh, Piper derides her for trying to pencil in nephew time. Uh, but also she did have a meeting. Like she told them, uh, no one else here works. Um... Piper's complaining about her working on a Saturday, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, really, like, everyone's being annoying in this scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, Piper also, she she blames her pushy boyfriend for this. <laughs> like, you wouldn't have tried to do national syndication if it wasn't for your pushy boyfriend. Like, she doesn't want her to have any success or what? Right. Uh, Phoebe points out for the millionth time that this is kind of a big deal. All of this is obnoxious to watch and I hate everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just don't have time for you guys. My paper, the column. <laughs> uh, Phoebe gets another call, uh, so she takes it, and uh, the monkey jumps on her head, and then leaps from sister to sister, uh, which Touching makes le- them. yeah, turning she- them into sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. <laughs> Um, this makes Leo laugh and not say, hey, why is a monkey here? <laughs> no one at any point goes, why was a monkey there? It's not like they thought, oh, a, a vendor maybe had the monkey. It was like just wandering around on its own. I think the mime was thinking that, but he couldn't say it. <laughs> the mime couldn't speak. <laughs> it had a mouth, but could not speak. <laughs> it had no mouth, and he had to scream. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a clown also lurks behind Leo during this scene. He laughs as this clown yes, sitting there. Like, oh, oh, oh. Evil clown. <laughs> the editing in this particular scene, where the monkey's jumping on them, and then like they ADR in a bunch of dialogue, like, ah, nah, nah, what's going on, a monkey? Ah, 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 but the baby! Ah. Uh, it's obnoxious. Like It's really awful to watch and listen to that scene. Mm-hmm. I wish that a monkey would strike me blind, deaf, and mute at that moment. <laughs> Uh, the monkey teleports out again after that. Not one person was looking at where that monkey went and went like, hey, there's a fucking monkey. A yeah, monkey that just teleported. <laughs> yeah, surely they'd be like, whoa, where'd that monkey go? Oh, it teleported out. <laughs> it reappears in the crone's lair and the crone gives him a treat before turning him back into a prop. <laughs> She's like, yeah, good monkey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're a totem again. You're out of the episode. You're out of the episode. Uh, so Phoebe goes to her work meeting, and the consultants that she meets with immediately start to suck up to her. Mm-hmm. Like, they're like, you're so pretty and cool, and I'm a big fan, and... Oh, shut up. Um, but this is Phoebe's worst nightmare, uh, because she can't Phoebe's hear nightmares. the compliments. <laughs> She's like, she can't hear the compliments. It truly is a Phoebe's nightmares. A morality tale, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, when the monkey stole their senses, it doesn't kick in right away, and the crone says, like, it'll kick in when it's the least, like, the most when important time. When it's the time. least important time. <laughs> the least important time. When they're most needed. When they're most said. needed. Which is, like, that was it for Phoebe? She has to hear the compliments. Meeting. <laughs> Yeah. I guess, well, I mean... Or getting was... smoke blown up her ass is when it was most needed. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be, you know, because it was important for I her job, even though she blows it off. I thought it was a dire situation, you would think, not know, it's when mm. it, no, nothing's really going on for any of them. It's the, although it's whatever like, they think is most funny. <laughs> Piper's driving, though, when her vision starts cutting out, and it doesn't really come to anything. She's kind of, eh. No, she runs into a pole. I guess. She ran into a pole, and then they went to commercial, and they leave you hanging on that, and then it's nothing. Yeah, then it's not. <laughs> it's, if anything ever meant anything, I would remember she ran into a pole, but yeah. it's like, she runs into a pole, and Charms is like, anyway. Yeah, they have no discussions about, like, uh, fixing the car or anything. Uh, no. They just go like, hey, why can't you heal my eyes, Leo? Did, she, did he have to heal her from other things? This seemed like it was kind of a serious crash, but... 
be nice if like she went flying through the windshield and was super <laughs> injured. They couldn't afford to do the crash. All they had was a camera zoom in on a pole and add a crash noise and right. go to commercial. So they're not doing stunt work of her flying out of a <laughs> <laughs> Unless they did bad CGI, that'd be funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Paige is on a date, uh, also receiving compliments, <laughs> yeah. and uh, Nate has arranged a surprise singing performance for her at his club, which she hates. Uh, mm -hmm. They act like this is a romantic gesture, but no, this is stupid. You don't, like, surprise someone when they yeah. say they were traumatized by singing in public. <laughs> right. And you're like, anyway, you can sing in public now. <laughs> Uh, but she's like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and try. And uh-oh, she loses her voice. Truly traumatizing. Just like Phoebe, she runs away. Both of them run away when <laughs> they lose their senses. He says, what's the matter with you? Have you lost all your senses? <laughs> uh, the Piper scene is after. She's driving, not receiving compliments. Hits the pole. <laughs> I wrote, yay. <laughs> At least that's the one part where like, it could have put one of them in danger. Yeah, it kind of, they kind of get in a lot of situations where they wouldn't really need to be able to speak or hear. I guess with Piper, she seems to be the one that would most be affected by this, because she mm -hmm. can't see what she's doing. But, but I don't know, there's a lot of situations it where it's so, like, it doesn't matter yeah. if you couldn't do these things. It's just so lame, and they glance over, it's like, why'd that happen, even? Yeah. Well, if for this being the crone's big plan, it seems most of the time they're minorly inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. Why are you the way that you are? So at the manor, Phoebe is watching her favorite movie of all time, a black and white monster movie that was referenced in more episodes than Norman Reedus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's got the volume all the way up, but she can't hear it. Then she runs around the house yelling, while Paige, who can't yell, tries to get her attention. So funny. And Paige acts like she can't walk faster than Phoebe, has to teleport in front of her. Yeah, uh, people don't act like people act. <laughs> I feel like Phoebe is the worst, like, she acts like she's also, like, challenged in some way. <laughs> like, she yells a lot, because mm -hmm. she can't hear, but then she, like, acts in other ways where it's like, just because you can't hear wouldn't make you do that. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she's the one that's, like, the weirdest about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Alyssa Milano yells a lot while Rose McGowan does charades. Uh, there's some real comedy happening here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, instead of writing this down, Paige imitates a monkey, while stupid Phoebe does not think this has anything to do with the mysterious monkey they encountered. <laughs> like, it, merely, like, it had to be like 20 minutes before. I mean, she went to that meeting and then left immediately. This can't have been much time that passed. Mm -hmm. Not that you would forget a monkey left on your head. Yeah. Uh, one of her guesses as to what she's uh, miming is PMS Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> the PMS uh, Werewolves prequel that we didn't know we needed. <laughs> uh, Leo orbs in with Blind Piper. That's the conclusion to her hitting a pole. Mm, she just goes like, why can't you heal my eyes? They don't go into the car accident or anything. He healed the car. He healed the car. <laughs> you can't heal all these other people, but like, oh, I healed the car. You know, just like signs. <laughs> It'd be so funny if Piper was just wedged in between the pole and the car, and that's the only thing keeping her in, in one piece. <laughs> Piper, can't move it, you'll die. <laughs> Do it, Leo! <laughs> or me out. <laughs> last breath, I curse you. <laughs> we killed Meryl the swing away. Anyway, um, Phoebe's making more stupid guesses. As to what Paige is miming. And she's trying to tell her she hears, hears people talking in the next room. And she's like using her hands to kind of do like the talking motion. And Phoebe's like, you're hearing puppets? <laughs> At least she's edgy in the South. <laughs> uh, more comedy ensues. Everyone acts like losing one sense makes them a crazy person. Unable to act normally or assess context clues. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, maybe there's some things you can't get. I get why you wouldn't function normally if you're not used to not being able to hear or see or speak etc mm -hmm. uh, but there are other things where it's like you you can gather from context there's like someone speaking something else is going on here you don't have to act like such a weirdo <laughs> uh, the main takeaway here is that they figure out the monkey did it <laughs> <laughs> monkey did it yeah uh, apparently the crone's plan is to take them out is just to have them annoy each other to death i don't know <laughs> yeah 
Like, they'll all be running around the house in circles being dumb, and I'll just waltz in and get the baby. <laughs> and I need the Kazi King for, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Leo blandly summarizes everything to them. This may be one of his blandest expositions he's ever had. <laughs> I don't know if his heart just wasn't in it. Maybe he's like, <laughs> he's they ruined mad my at script. The script. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I wrote. I'm not saying that with conviction. <laughs> he says Piper's the most vulnerable here. So you go hang out with Wyatt and his super baby force field's gonna protect you. <laughs> Paige, you go stock up on stun potions and then Phoebe, you check out the Book of Shadows. Yeah, he says this at Phoebe like she can hear him. Yeah. I guess he's expecting her to read lips. Read, reading lips is hard. Yeah, I get, like, you're, it would you're not going to immediately pick that. I thought it was insane that she says she's starting to be able to do it like partway through this episode. Like, I don't think so. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> pe even people who are good at reading lips, you don't get all of it. Mm -hmm. And especially with like fucking Mumble Piper. I don't know how you get anything <laughs> out of her. Anyway, uh, the Kazi King... <laughs> Is like, this monkey plan's stupid. Why don't we just go get them? And the crone's like, shut up. My monkey plan's actually brilliant. Why are you here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's there. I guess just to send minions to distract. But she could come up with other distractions, surely. Yeah, that's her whole plan, is to distract them with these senses being gone. I mean, I, I guess talk to the baby as Paige, but... That's yeah. pretty much her plan. They'll be distracted. I'll yeah. waltz in, grab the baby. Yeah, she's like, I can use this totem to take their senses and then I'll have them. And I could trick Y into thinking I'm one of the family. But outside of Paige's voice, I don't know how the sight or the hearing helps her. Does. It doesn't. She doesn't look like any of them. No. I don't know why Wyatt stupid baby can't <laughs> like tell like he hears the voice, but he can see it's not Paige. Mm -hmm. Baby's got eyes. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a stupid magic baby who protects them, and like, yeah. even in this episode, teleports Piper to Leo. Yeah, he's smart enough to know he's in danger and use a force field, but he's not smart enough to figure out that the crone's not Paige. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stupid well, kid. Oh, oh, that sounds like Get her. it together, you dumb baby. <laughs> Piper is being a terrible mother. <laughs> uh, and then Leo comes in. He's like, oh, the baby's yeah. crying because it's just gas. <laughs> well, <laughs> Piper's like holding the baby upside down. <laughs> Leo, what's the problem with this thing? <laughs> He's holding it upside down by an ankle. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> Try whacking against the bed frame position. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up and it's still going. That stupid baby doesn't even know nothing. <laughs> Uh, so Leo's like, it's it's just gas. Put the, put the baby on your shoulder and then burp him. And she's like, okay. And he says, this is kind of a backhand compliment, okay? Like, she's like she's learning. He's trying to be comforting to her. Mm -hmm. But he's like, you know, it's a myth that mothers always instantly bond with their children. <laughs> <laughs> some... He's getting some real digs in on her. You know what? Deserved. I, this is kind of nice that uh, this time around Leo's the one being kind of cruel. <laughs> some mothers never bond. <laughs> What are you talking about? I lactate poison. Why would you bond with that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Piper gets called away by Phoebe uh, to do something. Uh, she nearly <laughs> dies tripping over Wyatt's toys left on the floor. Like, Leo yeah. did not pick those up. He's yeah. like, eh, whatever. Leave Leo, him in front of the door. <laughs> Leo just walked into the room past that. Yeah, for my blind wife to trip over. I'll stay in here. They let her wander around the house a lot for someone who apparently can't see me. Like, I yeah. lived in this house since a kid. It's like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, uh, he lets her just wander blind up the stairs. She has to go upstairs to meet with them. One time she's carrying the baby. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. Toys. <laughs> <laughs> if the toys were left on the stairs, they tumbled. In yeah. <laughs> the force field protected oh, oh, us. <laughs> so the crone shows up uh, in the the hallway. I'm not sure what the plan was to get past Leo. I guess just I guess there was no plan. She didn't take she him into account. She just walks past him. No, she doesn't yet. There's one point anyway. She yeah. just walks past him like Leo apparently has no peripheral vision. So he's about as useless as Blind Piper in that scene. <laughs> I guess she's just like, I'll fling him into a wall. <laughs> um, in the attic, uh, Phoebe explains to her sisters that the monkey belonged to a sorcerer, uh, but he acted like a little shit. So he's turned into a totem. That's basically what <laughs> the backstory is. Wonderful. Uh, Paige is writing cue cards at this point, and she just writes, kill monkey. <laughs> And she writes, why didn't I do this earlier? <laughs> yeah, why did I do the charades? 
Phoebe gets a call from Elise, so she gets Piper to answer it. Uh, just as a Kazi demon appears, uh, Phoebe, despite not being able to hear, somehow gets the heads up and levitates out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she tries to direct right. Piper. Was it supposed to be premonition, maybe? Was it? I don't know. I think. don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I'm probably I giving them credit to, for nothing. It kind of seems that some parts of this, their other senses seem to be heightened, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They come up with some BS in this, yeah. Yeah. Um, she tries to direct Piper where to throw her hands, uh, but she ends up blasting Paige away. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> hilarious. Uh, Leo overhears this, so he tells Wyatt to put up a shield before he does, like, a silly sideways dash out of the room. Like, he had a little cartoon <laughs> sound like effect. Skip, <laughs> you skip out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> this gives the crone time to just waltz in and do her crone business. <laughs> Whoa, it is her, the crone. Not the crone. Uh, in the attic, Phoebe is trying to direct Piper like she's, like, physically holding her now. Like, she's gonna aim her like a Tommy gun. <laughs> uh, she's trying to direct her in the right direction, uh, but she somehow doesn't think to grab one of the stun potions herself. <laughs> she does not need to hear to grab a stun potion and throw it at the guy. Yeah. Like, Paige is knocked out at this point, and I get Piper couldn't see. Phoebe is fully capable of doing this without hearing. Yeah. But she nearly gets murdered. She does not grab the potion. Uh, and Leo has to come in and throw the potion at the demon. Uh, he has all of his senses. He's the most powerful of them all at this point. <laughs> Upstairs, the crone gets Wyatt... Or it's downstairs. Sorry, I didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> They're in the attic. Uh, downstairs, uh, the crone gets to Wyatt and he... Um, she, she speaks in Paige's voice. She sings the song and gets him to lower his shield. She only needed the voice. Again, the other stuff makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, upstairs, Leo heals Paige, and they've set up a torture cage for this <laughs> Kazi demon. Uh, Piper and Paige seem to have super other senses now, so they uh, they can like hear the singing downstairs. Like, oh, the, our our hearing's heightened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so only Leo goes to investigate. <laughs> They gotta stay up there and torture this guy. This guy is in a cage. He will stay there. They can't go investigate this? Like, they know Kazis are attacking them left and right. But no, just Leo. He's predictably thrown into a wall. <laughs> uh, Wyatt p- puts his force field back up, like, uh-oh. <laughs> and then the crone's pissed off about it. Uh, her monkey scent-stealing plan didn't take Leo randomly running in into account. <laughs> Yeah. And she literally so. says that uh, says that later. She's like, I didn't take the white lighter into account. It's like, all she had to do apparently is close the door, and that would have given her the couple of seconds she needed to grab the baby. Uh, uh, grab real quick. <laughs> she could have grabbed the baby and just orbed out and then been fine, or shimmered, or whatever the fuck they mm-hmm. call it with her. Uh, so she grabs Leo and pieces out. <laughs> She's like, I'll do something with him, I don't know. So the girls rush in to check on Wyatt. Uh, and some point, at some point they notice Leo's gone and they're like, huh, where'd Leo go? <laughs> where'd that guy who lives here go? <laughs> at the crone's place, the Kazi king is bitching again. And he's like, you got my warrior captured. You're messing everything up with this monkey plan. And she's like, shut up. I didn't take that white lighter into account, which seems like a big oversight considering his whole point is to protect them. And he's also the child's father. So Mm -hmm. she had to have known he was part of the equation. (laughs) Yup. He didn't even even do anything. He didn't like use any powers or shove her or do anything. Like he just ran in and then Wyatt (laughs) put the the shield back up and then she knocked him out instantly. He's not even that big of a threat. Mm -hmm. But she had to have thought, what if someone comes in? Like, really? Stupid crone. It's very stupid. Well, what do you know? It's not every day you see the stupidest thing you've ever seen. So she's just stuck him in a big tube of water, I guess? <laughs> this is so random. Why did she put him in a big tube of water? It's foreshadowing him being put on ice at the end of the series. <laughs> I just don't get this, because it's not like it's part of her theme or something. You know, like, no? some of them have, like, themes... Why does he get put in a tube of what? Why did she have this? <laughs> she used to do an escape act out of the tube of water. I guess as a white lighter, he's technically dead, right? So he doesn't need to breathe in water. Maybe. Because he does breathe. He seems to be coughing when he gets out of it. But uh-huh. I guess he won't, you know, drown. Yeah. Or I something. Don't know. <laughs> white lighters don't really make sense when they bring that stuff up. No. Uh, at the manor, which I wrote as the mansion for some reason. The mansion. <laughs> at the mansion. <laughs> the haunted mansion. It's Halloween. 
Uh, the girls and the baby hang out next to the demon they've captured for torture. <laughs> and they don't worry about Leo. They don't seem too concerned about getting on no. this. <laughs> Piper's hey, hey, uh, baby, get a good look at this torture. Yeah, she better. <laughs> he better uh, get a good uh, view of this because this is his future. <laughs> Uh, Piper is more concerned about her uh, maternal instincts, uh, and Phoebe yells at the baby like, "Oh, you calm the baby down!" <laughs> like, sure, okay, you can't hear, but you can tell what like you're speaking at a loud volume. <laughs> Surely you know like how much <laughs> how much volume you're putting into your voice. Why I gotta slap? <laughs> Stupid. At this point, the girls start to sense each other, like a sixth sense. Like they can read each other's minds. Mm -hmm. This is a weird thing to happen that doesn't seem to go very far. No, and like Leo says something about it having always been there or something. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a thing more often if that was always there? Uh-huh. Um, I think there's one other episode I can recall they do use this when they go to like this other... Um, dimension or something within like chris season like he changes something about the past or sends them so i don't know but they they use like i think they all go to different dimensions they can speak psychically to each other through it that's the only other time i remember this psychic connection coming up and i feel like this would be really handy if they could do that yeah i feel like that's the reason they try to act like this one instance in the whole series i guess of the other sisters using another's power makes any kind of sense. Yeah, I guess that's what they were trying to set up, but no. No. <laughs> Forget it! I'm not doing it! This episode was badly written! So this is when Piper decides to wander down the stairs blindly with her baby. <laughs> Again, trips on a toy and dies. <laughs> oh well, I let it on the baby, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll head downstairs while you guys torture the demon, okay? Alright, see you later, mm -hmm. bye! Paige, during the torture, is holding up cue cards threateningly, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Before they can even get the torture started, uh, Nate shows up, and uh, Paige begs Phoebe to get rid of him. <laughs> uh, somehow Phoebe can understand her charade explaining uh, the singing debacle, but not super obvious ones earlier. Yeah. I don't know how she got any of that. From Only what if she it's was doing. really out there, I'll immediately get that. Yeah, she wasn't getting, like, obvious things. And then she's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, he made you sing uh, as a surprise. Oh, that's romantic. <laughs> uh, so Follow Phoebe... your heart. Yeah. Follow <laughs> your heart. <laughs> Michelangelo, my inspiration. <laughs> uh, Phoebe helpfully yells at Nate until he leaves. <laughs> hey, go away! Get go it. away, I did Thumbs it. Thumbs up. Paige. <laughs> uh, she goes upstairs and then yells at Paige about her relationship. Like, she's just like, Nate deserves better or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Fuck you. You're the one cheating on your fucking boss. You're talking about fucking your boss and getting what you want later. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, so Paige has been torturing this Kazi uh, and he's not given up any information. And it turns out he can't read. <laughs> That's why he hasn't said anything. Hilarious. <laughs> he doesn't know what she's asking him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Paige writes that demons lie, so maybe he's lying about not being able to read. And Phoebe goes, yeah, but not about literacy. <laughs> <laughs> but not about literacy. He would never lie about literacy. <laughs> There's one thing the demons have a code about. <laughs> they cannot tell a lie about literacy. <laughs> uh, so the Kazi's threatened with more torture, and he's like, fine, okay. It was the crown that sent me. Stop torturing me, please. And they're like... <laughs> That's when we learn the Cro the Kazi King is even worse than we imagine because he's getting damaged from his yeah. lackey getting hurt. He can actually feel the torture, so he's at the crone's place, uh, like, oh, oh no, he needs my help. But this really doesn't make the Charmed Ones look any better. It just makes it seem like they're evil and they're mm -hmm. torturing these poor guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, crone, please, I gotta go help him, save him from the horrible Charmed Ones. And it's like, why do you need her permission? Just go. Yeah. <laughs> she failed at this monkey plan. She's proven very incompetent. She didn't take into account a very obvious thing and then left immediately mm -hmm. just do your thing you're fine yeah 
Uh, but she's like, if this guy tells them about my plan, I won't get my hands on the baby. But, like, they already know about the plan, pretty much, and she was foiled already without them knowing she was involved. So what more could they possibly <laughs> know that's going to make her even worse than she already is? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when she kills the Kazi king and all the Kazis die. Pretty good conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the Halliwell house, uh, the Kazi, their torturing disappears. And Phoebe's like, ah, it was weird anyway, let's go get the crown. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care that he died <laughs> or that they, surely they would know this means the king was killed and maybe they should worry about something but no nah. nah. so uh the crone shows up in the nursery piper's in there um but she can't see her so she uses uh page's voice and she's like hey good news i got my voice back uh so we're gonna go after the kazi king now so you should head on in here i'll take care of the baby uh, Piper starts to leave, but then she notices that the crone stinks. <laughs> this is almost a... Uh, hey, uh, Paige, what's up with the stink? <laughs> Your stink's usually different than you stink. <laughs> oh, yeah, but we got a crone on me or something. The crone was like, oh, it's Kazi stink. Don't oh, worry about Kazi it. Stink, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, this was almost a fatal flaw in her plan, her stink. Yeah. Uh, but she, she had a, an answer for everything. <laughs> so Piper's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wanders I on guess. out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Despite the fact that Wyatt should have, like, before, maybe caught on that something was up here. Um. He he once again thinks this is Paige talking to him. Stupid mm-hmm. baby. Um. But the girls have figured out what's going on. They rush back in, and uh, the crone gets Wyatt to protect her with his force field. <laughs> Stupid baby. So the girls do something that they um. I don't know. Can they ever do this again? They channel Paige's powers. No, by... this never happened. Like, yeah, because Paige can't use her power because apparently she has to say it out she, loud yeah, she to has teleport to an thing. object to yeah. her. Like, I, I didn't know she really had to say it, but yeah, she can't teleport Wyatt to her. So yeah, they steal her power somehow. Which yeah, is... they hold hands and then they all they both speak. Yeah. And then yeah, they, they can say orb why. Wyatt. Like, yeah. Hey, let's try. <laughs> but like, okay, why it, does this work? Why was this the solution? If he's got a force field, I mean, I would think the magical force field could protect him from that. But also, they're like, it's his mom and his aunts. Just say like, hey, Wyatt, mm-hmm. it's a fucking crone. <laughs> put your shield down, you idiot. <laughs> Um, baby. <laughs> if he's smart enough to figure out to put the shield down, he should be yeah. smart enough to figure out he, that they're there going like, yeah, hey. <laughs> and smart enough to teleport Piper to Leo at the crone's lair yeah. in a couple minutes. You gotta figure out what this baby's deal is. This is inconsistent. Yeah, like how stupid or smart is this baby? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> figure out this this baby's IQ, all right? <laughs> Um, he's just sitting there playing Nickelback I mean, songs in his yeah, head. Yeah, we know he's pretty stupid when he gets older. <laughs> Um, so they teleport, or they orb Wyatt out of her hands and over to them, and then the crone's like, I've seen everything. I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> I saw power! Unlimited power! I saw really dumb plot lines <laughs> with your future kids. I see bad facial hair in his future. <laughs> Looks really fake and stupid museums in the future. Sorry that he couldn't make it as a poor man, couldn't do it as a blind man stealer. <laughs> as a blind piper stealer. Blind piper. <laughs> yeah, I forget what year was his future time supposed to be. It's something that we're already past now, isn't it? Like, and there's like flying cars and shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'll be great when we get to that episode. Easy time travel. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they vanquish the the crone easily. It's Great so conclusion stupid. to her story. How old is she supposed to be? I don't know when she wrote this demon law and all this other shit, but then it's just like pff, dead no, immediately. Like, why do they never make any of these things seem like they're hard to take down? Like they don't even struggle. Like you don't have to have them doing a bunch of wire work and stuff, but yeah. you can make it feel like this is no deadly dealing with her it's scary like they could have tried anything instead of just oh let's waltz in and go eh, blow up they didn't even do a power of three spell to get rid of her. no yeah they just throw a potion and it's lame yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's dead that's the end of her two episode story arc why why is this what you do <laughs> r.i.p the crone we hardly hardly knew you she's dead wrapped in plastic mm-hmm. etc I'm in need of a guilt remover spell. Uh, They all get their senses back. Apparently killing her somehow affected this totem. I don't know. I guess she had the senses in her, so they went went back to them. I guess. I guess. I'll give it to them. (laughs) Um, They remember that they haven't rescued Leo yet, and they're like, oh yeah, we just killed the one person who knows where he is. Whoops. (laughs) (laughs) 
And Leo spends the rest of the series in a water tube. Yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> uh, so they're like, quick, Phoebe, get a vision off of the smudge mark left on the on the rug by the crone. She's like, all right. Uh. Uh, Wyatt gets impatient because that's stupid, so he just orbs him and Piper to go get Ned. <laughs> I love, though, if they didn't have Deus Ex Baby and just, like, every once in a while during future episodes, we cut to Leo in the tube he's of alive, water. He's all waterlogged <laughs> and gross. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets <laughs> Damn it. He gets, like, a snorkel. <laughs> uh, so Phoebe takes this moment to claim that Wyatt is a genius because he takes after her. Shut the fuck up, Phoebe. <laughs> you were the dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had to cast a smart spell on herself. She's canonically dumb. Okay? Uh, Wyatt and Piper free Leo from his Augustus Gloop tube. <laughs> uh, they have a family moment. <laughs> Piper's like, yeah, everything's cool. Uh, but, you know, it was weird. We could read each other's minds. <laughs> An expedition... <laughs> Exposition dump Leo is just like, oh, yeah, yeah, you could always read each other's minds. Shut up. <laughs> I wonder about it. Don't, don't think about it too much. <laughs> Can we still use each other's powers? No, it'll never happen again. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the most important thing is Phoebe's plot with national syndication in the newspaper. Uh, she's like, I didn't really want this. You know, I was uh, thinking about, like, you know, I wasn't really thinking about what I really wanted. I want to spend time with my family. After this episode, she will continue to not spend time with her family and focus <laughs> yeah, on the paper. I was going to say, yeah, that's why we never hear her going on about the paper ever again. If anything, she gets worse. Uh -huh. <laughs> this episode, the end of this is a lie. Absolutely. Oh, and she, <laughs> she's like, well, Jason might not like this decision as my boss, but as my boyfriend, I can make him think whatever I want. Whoa. Uh, okay. <laughs> Her, she's terrible to Jason. <laughs> Fucking jerk. <laughs> and then Paige sings at the club the end. <laughs> yeah. She gets to do her sexy fever rendition. Norman Reedus goes, whoa, whoa. The Walking Dead or something. Yeah, man. one more episode and I'll get bored. <laughs> uh, so, what are your final thoughts on this episode, Phelan? A tour de force. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> a waste <laughs> like i get why charmed has these things to like reoccur and they know this is going to be the last time they use them and they're like let's have a bunch of dinking around till they really easily get rid of them <laughs> <laughs> great wonderful story yeah, good <laughs> so stupid waste of it <laughs> it's time charm <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to know what Brian Crass wrote and if it was better than when it ended up on screen. You know it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Someone bored out of their mind on the charm set might have come up with something better. <laughs> he just wrote, like, on a napkin, like, monkey? <laughs> monkey Question equal mark? bad? Kill monkey? Leo save the day? And they're yeah. like, Leo save the day, Leo water tube. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, I had a lot more plots going on here. You just left the exposition dumps in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought this was pretty middle of the road. I think um, what's most interesting about it is that Brian Kra Krauss wrote it while he was very bored. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of wasted potential. This is, again, I, like, I don't know what they did in the next episode, but it seems like another case of just before the finale, mm -hmm. they kind of end the arc, whatever this happened to be. They, right. And then, like... I don't know what happened in the last two episodes, but it feels like that could have been part of their finale. I feel like you know, having the crone get some kind of future vision, which is kind of what they're building up to the whole time, to have it happen and then she dies two seconds after is just such bullshit. Yeah. Like, really... that should have meant something. There should have been something revealed, or she got some inside knowledge that helped her in some way in the episode, but it amounts to nothing. <laughs> Okay, you know what the, the next two or the three episodes were? Mm. The one about the necromancer and uh, Grandma Haterade, where she's fucking the necromancer or whatever. Sweet. And then uh, the one where they turn into goddesses. That's their oh. finale. So yeah, they could have had this as part of their finale, but they yeah. didn't. No. Uh, so Phelan, big question. Who's your standout loser, your Margoyle, or your hero of the episode, your Carman? My Margoyle is going to be the Kazi King. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good choice he was useless <laughs> and then he gets hurt when his stupid minions get hurt and he apparently could make a bunch of clones and never does it 
<laughs> we don't know why he's there, and the episode can't even justify him being there. And then the crone goes, oh yeah, why are you here, and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of that? Do you have a car man? A car man's going to be Sarah Palmer for giving this stupid episode and character a performance it didn't deserve. It's <laughs> <That's> pretty good. <laughs> it was your car man and Margoyle. All right. Um, I thought about giving the Kazi king a Margoyle, mm -hmm. but since you gave him a Margoyle, I feel like I should okay. spread the Margoyle around. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to make Brian Krauss the Margoyle, <laughs> because surely this wasn't what he intended. <laughs> but he did so write an episode. It's just like he, made, he wrote an episode on a monkey's paw, and this is how it turned out. <laughs> it is a really lame thing to write an episode around a stupid mm. monkey totem, so I don't know. And plus, they also did like kind of a monkey totem type episode. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a totem, but they had like three chimps and all that. I don't know. I guess I he's like, like hey, they already copy. have the plot, so they'll they'll make this episode if I write it. Yeah, and they're like, we love it. We're going to change some things. <laughs> <laughs> we love that we have that prop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. It says here that Leo gets flushed down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the plunger stuck on his face. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to make my car man uh, page in the first half of the episode. When she starts torturing, I don't know if that's really what the, in the car man spirit, but when she calls uh, Phoebe pathetic, that's pretty heroic in my book. So. <laughs> Anything else about sense and sensibility, Phelan? No, there's no sense to it. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, we'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, or reviewed wherever you're enjoying this podcast at. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash movie nights the series and youtube.com slash Phalus. You can see uh, episodes of our shows ahead of time, or you can vote for polls, which charmed episodes that we're going to do next uh, on Patreon. Mine is patreon.com slash movie nights. Phalens is patreon.com slash Phalus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for the theme song, for editing the podcast, for being all around an awesome guy. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter, or his YouTube channel is also at Pretor Hunter. He does some pretty cool Let's Plays, so check those out. What hashtags should we use, Phelan? Hashtag I'm a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Ziggy. <laughs> Hashtag Monkey and Around. <laughs> Hashtag Canonically Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to call it a day. So we'll see you Charmanders next time. Bye.